All right, so we've built our three sort procedures, one for category, one for division, and one for the total. Now, quick little heads up, and I'm sure you probably caught this as I was copying and pasting earlier and making adjustments. Make sure if you're copying and pasting, you created your first one. When you paste it down below, make sure you change the name, right? Here's a division. We went to category. We updated the range that we're going to sort. When I did my total one earlier, I updated the range there to F2, but I didn't change my name. It was still set to division sort. So make sure each of them are named properly. Uh, you know, if, if not, if you've got two procedures in there named the same thing, it's going to throw an error at you. So make sure you change that one. But we've got three of them created there. We're going to come back to those. Put those to the side for just a moment. Uh, we're going to talk about the input box function that's built into Excel VBA. Now, to build a little bit of context around this discussion, we've got our three procedures. They all sort our list in slightly different ways, just different columns on how we want to sort the list. Well, eventually, I want to prompt the user on how they want to sort the list. Do you want to sort this by division? Do you want to sort it by category? Or do you want to sort it by the total column? How do you want to do that? Well, there's a few different ways that we can present the user and prompt them for which method they want to use to sort the list. We could, we saw buttons earlier. We could create three different buttons and put those buttons on the worksheet and then assign these three procedures to each of the buttons. One button will get the division sort, one button will get the category sort, and one button will get the total sort. And that's great, that works. The method that we're gonna take a look at here involves what's called an input box. And an input box is really a prompt, comes up on the screen, it's a little box, and it'll ask the user, how do you wanna sort your list? Do you wanna sort it by category, division, or total? They'll input a value, hit okay. We take the value that they input into that input box, and then we're gonna build some logic. The logic will then look at it and say, hey, did they pick division? If they did, then sort it this way. Did they pick category? Then sort it this way, and so on. So we'll prompt the user through an input box and then utilize that value somewhere inside of our code. So before we build all that logic and such, let's do a kind of a high level peek into an input box function inside of our Excel VBA. So I'm still inside the same example file, but we're gonna do a little bit of fun here. I'm gonna create some empty space there at the top, just hit my enter key a few times. And I'm gonna create a procedure here where we're just gonna mess around with the input box function, just see how it works. So I'm gonna take this one out by hand. I'm gonna say public sub fun with input box, and I'll hit my enter key. So normally I go to insert procedure, I fill that out here, we could just type it in by hand as well. You hit your enter key, it should have finished it. It put the parentheses in there for you and it put the end sub line in there for you as well. If not, you could type those in yourself. I'm gonna drop a comment in. We'll just say, get input from user. And how do we do that? We utilize an input box. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do here is create a variable. Now the variable is essentially going to store the value that the user inputs into the input box. So here I'll bring in the dem keyword. I'm just gonna call this user input and I'm gonna give it a type of string. I'm gonna expect a text value back from the user. Cool. All right, so now I'm gonna say user input is equal to an input box. All right, now the input box has some arguments, some parameters that we need to fill out in order to really specify what the input box should look like, how it's gonna be presented to the user. So here I'll say user input, the variable, is equal to input box. I'm gonna open up a parentheses, and here we can see the various arguments that the input box function contains. It has a prompt. That's the message that you're gonna prompt the user with. What's your favorite color? How do you wanna sort the list? Right, and so on and so on. Whatever you're asking the user. Then we've got a title for the box. 
You can put a little title at the top of the box. You got a default value. So if you want to put something into the box prior to the user putting something, you could put a default value. The X pause, the Y pause, that's position. Where do you want to put it on the screen? Right, you can specify that. And then you got a help file and some context. Now, if you look closely, most of those arguments are inside of square brackets. When you see square brackets or an argument wrapped in square brackets, it means it's optional. You don't have to use it. In our case, we're gonna take advantage of the prompt and the title. So here, inside my input box, open parentheses. I'm gonna open up a pair of quotes, close them there. Inside of those quotes, I'm gonna put my prompt. We'll say, what is your favorite color? Question mark. So that's our prompt. And I'm gonna do comma. And now I'm inside the title. I'm just gonna say favorite color. And then I'm gonna close the parentheses and call that good. I'll hit my enter key. All right. So now we've got a variable in there, user input, and we're gonna make it equal to the results of the input box. So if I go ahead and run this, there's my input box. So you can see my title there, favorite color. We got our prompt, what is your favorite color? And we got the little box for them to type into. So for me, I'm gonna say blue. Blue is my favorite color. And I'm gonna hit okay. That's it. In reality, when the user hit okay, user input is now equal to whatever the user typed in. In my case, it would have been equal to blue. Just so we can see this visually, you don't have to do this. If you just put your hands in the air, kick back, relax, you can watch my screen for a moment. Just to the left of that line, user input, we got that gray bar. I'm gonna click just directly in line on that gray bar. This creates what's called a break point. Our code is gonna run, but then it breaks, it'll stop at that point right there. So if I do this, play, oh, nothing happened. If I hover over the top of user input, we can see that user input is equal to nothing, just two empty quotes there. It's not equal to anything because I haven't been prompted yet. But if I continue this, if I go ahead and step beyond this, I'll get the prompt, I could type in the value, and when I hit okay, user input would then be equal to whatever I type in. Take a look, I'm gonna stop this. And here, I'm gonna create one more line. I'll say message box. And inside the message box, I'm gonna say user input, which is our variable, right? So we're just gonna have a little message box that comes out and just presents us with the user input value. So I'll try this again. I'll go ahead and hit play. So if I hover over it, currently user input is equal to nothing. I haven't given it a value, just two quotes, it's a string value. If I go ahead and step through, I'll go to debug and I'm gonna do a step into. There's my prompt, what's my favorite color? I'll put in blue and if I hit okay. All right, the next line, but if I hover over, what's it equal to now? User input equals blue. And if I do a debug, step into, there's my prompt, my message box, blue. Boink. Pretty cool. So we got a variable in there, someplace we can store the input from the user. We take that from the input box, whatever the user typed in, put it in the variable, and then we can use that in some way within the code, such as an if statement, some type of logic, maybe a calculation, whatever it happens to be. But this was this was just to give us a high level. I'm gonna remove that breakpoint just by clicking on the dot there. This gave us kind of a high level of utilizing an input box function inside of our VBA. So try this out. And if you feel like you wanna experiment, you know, create a couple of input boxes and put them inside of different variables and try outputting them. Just get a feel for working with the input box function inside of VBA.